Hey, Richard Bryce here. Today, I want to help you improve your one-handed backhand by talking through some of the most important things when it comes to the contact point, because the contact point and where you hit the ball is really gonna be essential for you to develop your one-handed backhand into a weapon. So I hope you find the video helpful. If you do, it'd be great if you give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already done so, subscribe to my channel as well. Okay, so the contact point and the contact is the most important part of every stroke, and obviously the one-handed backhand is no exception to that. You can get everything else right. You can have this perfect-looking Federer or Wawrinka-like take back, and then you get the contact point wrong, and the back fence is your best friend or you've lost your tennis ball. Conversely, you can get everything else wrong. You can just have this horrible swing. You kind of get it right on contact, and uh, it went in. Uh, you can get it right on contact, and you've hit a good shot somehow. It's all about this contact point. So when we're talking about the contact point, there's really a couple of things that we've got to consider. Number one is gonna be how far in front of the body, and number two is how far away from the body. They're both really important in order for us to be able to hit efficiently. When it comes, we're gonna start with how far in front of the body, because that one stays relatively stable, regardless of how high the ball that we're trying to hit is. We want to meet the ball maybe a foot, a foot and a half in front of our body, and the reason that we want to do that is because that's going to allow us to efficiently generate racket head speed using our full kinetic chain. I'm not telling you to always try and hit the backhand as hard as you can. What I'm saying is learning how to efficiently generate power using full body rotation. It's the same for all rotational sports, hip, torso, shoulder. So if I was throwing a punch, I was doing a jab with my left hand, it would still be through the hip, torso, shoulder, one-handed backhand, hip, torso, shoulder, racket, into contact point. So it's just efficiency. And by being efficient, it actually means we can use less effort. And when we use less effort, we're more likely to be more controlled. So more likely to make the shot. So we've got to do our unit term. We're in there. We're dropping. We're driving from the hip, dropping the racket into the slot. Then we're using our torso, pulling through with our arm and really releasing the racket into the ball and look how far in front of my body that is to make that happen so i'm just kind of doing all that and meeting it out in front and that's what allows me to do it so we've got to get it out in front if the ball is back here i don't have the ability to do that and again with the top spin this is going to be really really important so the top spin on the one-handed backhand it doesn't really come from this motion so this can make the racket go up and down this can make the racket go up and down. There's a little bit of that going on. So we are going from low to high with the shoulder, but so much of it comes from external rotation. So it comes from your ability to you know, drop the racket down. So if I want to hit it flat, I'll drop it in there and hit through. If I want to get more topspin, I'll drop it down. I'll internally rotate my shoulder. And now as I come through to the contact, the spin comes from the external rotation and it's there. And the racket will follow through more there as a natural progression, but it's that that part doesn't happen until it's out in front of your body. So you've got to get that contact point out in front of the body. <sighs> it's going to be the same on low balls and high balls. So, you know, if I'm getting down low and hitting a one-handed backhand, I've got to get below the height of the ball. I've still got to get down there to get the top spin to get it up and over, but it's got to be in front of the body. Uh, higher ones can be a little bit trickier. Often you might want to be getting back and taking it a little bit lower, but you can hit the ball from up higher. It's still gonna be the same thing. Still has to be out in front. You're just gonna modify. Instead of dropping down there, you drop it into there and then hit through. But you still gotta get that contact point out in front. So that is part one. Part two is gonna be how close and how far you are away from the ball. So when it comes to how far away from the ball you are, this one is going to vary a little bit. Now, as a general rule, people have a tendency to get too close to the ball. But on the one-handed backhand, you can actually get away with that a little bit. Because of the, just the mechanics of the stroke, you can kind of hit straight through there and still make it work. But you do want a little bit of distance. So the thing that we're going to be talking about here is this is going to vary based on the height of the ball. So you've just seen me kind of do a, couple, a low and a high ball um, in terms of contact point out in front. It's fairly similar. But when we're doing this low ball, my contact point is going to be much closer to my body. So down there, it's going to be maybe about this far away. But then if I just kind of take my racket up, you can see that my racket just moves further away from my body. So if I stand up with it, we've now got a contact point when I'm hitting the high ball where it's quite a bit further away. For the low ball, it's maybe 
a foot away from my knee, maybe a foot and away from my, a foot and a half away from my torso, when I stand up more, it's now maybe two foot away. So that's the factor that you're gonna take into account. Uh, not a very good feed for the high ball. So for that one, it's gonna be further away from my body than this low one that's down here. So when it comes to the contact point, they're the two factors that you have to consider. Out in front for all of them, a foot, foot and a half, distance away from the body, they're both important. Now, there's a couple of things that are gonna come with this. A lot of it is about getting the work done with your feet. You know, they hit those nasty opponents, they hit the ball where they wanna hit the ball. You're in the position that you're in. You've gotta read where the ball's going, you're gonna to have to react and set up in position. So if you can't do these high balls and they're tricky for a lot of people, you've gotta make sure you get back and allow the ball to drop into this contact zone that's a bit more comfortable, but still make it so it's outside, or sorry, so that it's out in front of your body. Same thing for all the shots. You've got to get the work done with your feet and set up in the right position to make the contact point as ideal as possible. But something that comes along with this is the visual system. I talk about this a lot. The reason I talk about it a lot is because it's the biggest thing that holds most players back. You can only play as well as your visual system will allow. The pros, the people that we see on TV, have amazing functioning visual systems. That's one of the reasons, one of the many reasons that they can do what they do. But the chances are that your visual system doesn't accurately predict where the ball is going to land quickly enough so it makes it hard to set up in the right position and if you can't accurately judge distance you can't judge where the ball is going to bounce how it's going to react all that stuff it's hard to get this spacing part correct and even more difficult is your ability to meet the ball out in front because there's a few things going on there now i've made another video that talks about timing in detail i'll place the link down below but here i just want to say that you've got to start your swing at the right time if you don't start your swing at the right time relative to the speed of the ball it's not going to work you've also got to adjust the speed of your swing relative to the speed of the ball and the distance it is away in order to make that contact point out in front and your visual system has to allow you to do that if it's not working well enough you won't ever be able to get this contact point optimal and maybe that's something you've already experienced and maybe that's why you're watching this video so to help you with that part of it i've created a master class it's going to break this, this stuff down in a little bit more detail, explain about the visual system, vision training. And it's going to take you through three different assessments. These are assessments that I do when I work with players to figure out what's going on. But it really will help you to identify if, in fact, you do have this problem uh, and it's affecting your tennis. So if that's something you're interested in, then go ahead, uh, check it out. If not, don't worry about it. Just focus on the, the technical bits, the on-court stuff, and work on that and see how far you get. So hopefully this has been useful. Hopefully it's helped to clear up maybe some questions that you had about the contact point. Um, I would love to hear any questions that you've got left if I haven't answered them very well. Um, or if you've got any comments about this stuff, anything you want to say about your game, let me know down below. I'd love to hear from you.